Hey, hey, I'm Casey Arn, and I help triathletes prepare for great open water swims by doing great stuff in the pool. And today I want to talk to you a little bit about some things that you can fix without a coach, all right? So I know everybody's looking to save money, but you want to swim well. So there are some things that are way easier with a coach, but I've got a couple for you that you can fix on your own, all right? So I see a lot of what I call adult onset swimmers for private lessons and swim video analysis, and they all have this burning question. They've all been looking through hundreds of free YouTube videos, they've digested all kinds of information from lots of free sources, and they've been doing their very best to teach themselves how to swim well. And when they finally break down and come to see an expert, the burning question is either, am I doing this right or am I doing this wrong? Which is basically the same thing. They want to make sure that and get some validation that what they've been spending so much time on is actually translating into good swimming. And the reason they have to ask this is because, well, you know, it's hard to see what you're doing when you're swimming. Unless you're carrying around an extra person who's training a video camera on you, you know, it's really hard to know if the stuff that you've been watching is, is what you're actually doing. Because if you look like a good swimmer, chances are you are a good swimmer. All right, it's a lot about technique here. So, you know, I, I really love it when people take charge of their own learning. I think that's awesome. I love that there's a lot of free resources out there. Most of them are good, and um, most of those good ones are not that hard to find. So it's really great. I also love it when people come to me to help them synthesize all these kind of random bits that they're getting from everywhere. Sometimes they're contradictory. You know, the guy in the lane next to you is telling you one thing and the YouTube guy is telling you another and you've tried them both and you're just not sure which one is right. And that's, that's when it's good to pull somebody in to make sure that you're getting all the bits put together properly because it, it's all about, you know, putting together a good swim stroke. So um, you really can come a long way on your own, but it's great to have somebody helping you out. And sometimes, you're hearing things um, that are not necessarily meant for you. <laughs> I've told this story so many times, a lot of you guys have probably already heard it, but uh, I have seen swimmers who have heard, maybe in a group setting or just in general, you know, they need to be really careful not to cross over the center line. So they're really careful not to cross over the center line. The problem is they never were crossing over to begin with. And now instead of having a, a good stroke where everything's lined up with their shoulder, they're swimming like army crawl, like over here. They're trying so hard not to cross over that they end up just like killing their power because their hands are spread so wide of their shoulders instead of being lined up. And uh, I have seen that definitely a couple of times. So you wanna make sure that the advice that you're getting and using is actually helping you. And it's not just some general thing that actually doesn't apply to you. So, you know, uh, what I want to say to you today is that you have already got a really great tool to help you with your swimming even if you don't have a swim bag, you don't have any fins, you don't use paddles, you don't even have a pool buoy to use, you still have a great tool and that is your own two eyes. All right, so seeing is really key to being able to fix things that you can see. Now granted, you can't see everything. But if you can see it, it's much easier to fix it. You don't have to go based on feel because what feels right, what feels normal is whatever is normal for you. And that's not necessarily correct. But if you can see it, then you can fix it. Now, there are some things that you just can't see. For instance, a lot of people who learn to swim later in life, they will have a kick where there's a lot of knee bend, all right? So instead of kicking with the straight leg, We've got this kind of knee bend going on and we get kind of this bicycling motion of the legs. And that's not great, all right? You can't see that. There's no way you can follow that as you're swimming. Maybe if a friend videotaped you on the side, you could see if you were still doing it, but you can only see that when you get to the end of the pool. Other things that you can't see is when you're taking a breath to the side, you're not gonna be able to see what the arm in front of you is doing. And um, I find that that arm is usually doing a whole bunch of unhelpful things. It's gonna be hard for you to fix that because you just can't really see what's going on. But today I wanna to talk about three things that you can use these great tools that are right here on your head that you are covering up with goggles so that you can have your eyes open, what you can fix, all right? And these three are things that are, your hands are doing at the front of your stroke. So they're happening in front of your shoulders and that makes them very easy to watch if you will only just pick up your chin and look 
at what's going on. And maybe you have never done that. Maybe it never even occurred to you to look to see what's going on. Um, and I'm, I'm really gonna key you in on these three. And it's possible that you're not messing up any of these three. Maybe you're messing up all of them. But what I want you to come out of this with is an idea of, you know, you can make a little short list for yourself of things to work on the next time that you go to the pool. Just check on these things and I'm gonna give you some steps that you can go through to try to get all, any faults that you do see fixed just by using, again, your two eyes. Seeing is key, all right? Your eyes are your best weapon against bad swimming. And I'm gonna say that at least one more time. I want you to remember that and definitely use it. Okay, so here are the three things that we're gonna to try to fix today that you can see. One of them is I already mentioned. That is a crossover. When your hand enters in front of you, you want it to just slip forward at shoulder width. If it goes across the center line, it could even be like past your head, but it might just be right in front of your face. What you're gonna see is uh, that it doesn't just slide forward and you don't necessarily feel the resistance of your hand traveling over as it fully extends, but it's there. So when you take that resistance away, it's going to make your swimming easier. So a crossover is one. Another one is where your palm is not down at your entry and extension, but rather you have a thumb first or even a little finger first entry. And you wanna make sure that that is, is not happening. And along with both of those is uh, middle finger pointing across the lane line versus straight ahead to where you want to go. Now the third one is uh, more related to rhythm than kind of geometry. And that is your hand at the front on one side or the other, or maybe both, could be pausing. If you extend fully and then you wait for a second, and then you start your catch. This is putting a dead spot in your stroke that can really be messing with your ability to get all the different motions of swimming to synergize with each other, to get a good, a good stroke going. So um, I'm facing you, and so the, what you're seeing from my hand is not really what you're gonna see. So I'm gonna experiment here. I'm gonna go on the other side of the camera and try to give you a little bit of a view of what these three stroke faults might look like to you if you're doing them wrong. All right, so let's give this a try. I'm gonna walk around the other side. Now the first one we had is a crossover and typically what this is gonna look like is you're gonna see kind of the side of your hand and then as it goes forward, it will kind of move outward so that by the end of the stroke, you end up with everything lined up, but you saw this kind of sideways drift. And the next one is the thumb first entry or a little finger first entry rather than palm down. Palm down is what we want. And then the last one is where you see a pause. So we've got a good extension and then a weight and then a catch. And then a good extension and a weight and then a catch. So as you lift your chin up and the water is hitting you more like here instead of up on the top of your head like I teach, then you're gonna be able to see what's happening as your hands travel forward. And you wanna make sure that they're doing the right thing. So here are your six steps to diagnose and fix a problem. Number one is you just wanna educate yourself. So you just did that. Step one is done. You haven't even gone to the pool yet. Step one of six is done. You know what it looks like if it's wrong. You know what it looks like if it's right. You're ready to diagnose. Number two is the diagnosis. So without changing anything about what you do, you're just gonna go swim and you're gonna watch your right hand for a while. Does it cross over? Is it going in thumb first and then tilting out? Do you see a little bit of this? Or is it pausing at the front? And sometimes a pause, you'll kind of see your fingertips swoop up. That's doubly bad. Definitely don't want that. Again, something you can easily see. All right, so you're gonna look really hard at your right hand. Don't try to change anything. Just note what it's doing that you want to fix later. Then watch your left hand. Remember to focus on one thing at a time. Left hand first, right hand first, left hand first, whatever. You just wanna look at one hand at a time. Get an idea of what's going wrong, what you might need to fix, and then you're gonna make yourself a little short list. Now, continue to focus on one thing, all right? So in the next step, you're gonna watch one hand and you're gonna to try to fix one thing. Just cross over, just palm down. If you're moving on to the rhythm element of not pausing, great, but deal with those first two first. Deal with the technique thing and then the rhythm layer, all right? So you're gonna focus on one hand at a time, one stroke fault at a time, and you want to watch it happen correctly 
several times in a row. So continue to watch. After this step, you're not gonna watch as frequently, so I'm guaranteed I'm hopefully not gonna give you like a crick in your neck or something, but you do need to watch it happen uh, correctly several times because you need to memorize what it feels like when it looks right. And that is number four. So first, educate yourself. Two, observe. Three, watch it happen correctly. And as you're watching it correctly, you're also doing number four, which is to memorize what it feels like when it looks right. And this is gonna be different from what it feels like when you do it your old way. It might feel weird, it might feel a little clumsy, it might feel a little awkward. Um, it is possible to overdo things, so you wanna make sure that you're really correcting it correctly and not like going all the way to the other side. Um, you know, again, army crawl, you know, with that, all right? But it's gonna feel different. If it doesn't feel different, it's gonna feel normal, and normal is whatever you were doing before. So you need to maybe make a word, a, a mental picture, some sort of tool that brings to mind what this new thing is like. Because number five, is being able to quickly tell the difference between your old way and the new way as you're swimming along without looking necessarily. And you are gonna still want to look every once in a while if there's something that's really giving you a problem that's being hard to fix, all right? And um, so you need to be able to quickly tell, mm, that one just wasn't quite right, I'm gonna fix it on the next one. But if you can't really distinguish the difference between old and new, it's hard to do that without looking. All right, does it make sense? Okay, cool. So then the last step is you're aiming to get to 100% the new thing, all right? So you just wanna have this focus for part of your practice. I don't want you guys to go crazy thinking super hard about eight things at one time. Again, if you've got a long set and you wanna fix a crossover on your right hand, then for part of that set, you're gonna be thinking about the crossover on your right hand. And that's it, not eight other things, all right? So try to master one thing. Don't try to sort of do six things. Mastery is really important. It requires focus. Um, you know, multitasking is kind of a myth and it definitely hurts your brain. You need to be able to swim in sort of a normal rhythm. Um, so instead of thinking super hard and just discombobulating your swimming, think about one thing and try to master that. Then think about another thing and try to master that. This could be even on, you know, a one one hundred of one thing, a one hundred of another thing, and then as they start to get easier, you can start to put them together. All right, so that's six things you can do to start to master this one better technique thing that you can see. All right, awesome. So, you know, you're not gonna be able to see everything you're doing wrong. Having a coach who can see it for you, having some videotape of yourself, this is really helpful, but ultimately it's gonna come down to you have to put the work in in the pool to fix an old habit and make a new habit. So being able to see what you're trying to fix is super awesome. I hope this is helpful. Uh, I look forward to hearing back from you. Uh, so please message me. I would love to hear what thing you fixed and uh, hear about the successes that you had, the improved feel for the water that you gained from changing that thing. And I really am excited to, to hear back from you. So um, I hope this was helpful. If you feel like you have an issue that is really hard to fix or something that you know is not quite right that you can't actually see, a swim video analysis is terrific and I would love to talk to you a little bit more about that. So uh, anyway, thank you so much for watching. Hey Billy, make sure to uh, watch from the beginning, okay? We're just finishing up. I appreciate you guys watching and I will see you right back here next Wednesday with another tip. All right, take care. Bye-bye.